What's up, everybody, and welcome to the real episode 164 of True to Size. Like I know that hesitation wasn't intentional, but it was it was good. Either way, it was good. Yeah, the hesitation <laughs> worked. What? I, I felt the, I felt the uh, awkward silence. I, I, <laughs> I kind of overplayed it when you said. It. I'm like, yeah, I told awkward you, silence. And then... there's going to be an awkward silence, and it's <laughs> yeah. it's really awkward, man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's going on, everyone? And welcome to True Two Size. We are a weekly podcast centered around the wild world of sneakers. I will be your host today. My name is Lawrence Hopkins, and I am joined by the rest of the quarantine team at Canada Got Soul, Mr. Joel Hernandez. Hello, hello. Mr. Alvin Martinez. Bonjour. And... Oh, okay. He goes by Sniper, so you better be ready when he pulls up for a jumper. Oh. And if you think that's impressive, when he goes bowling, he doesn't even use the bumpers. Oh. The way he be dressing, he should be in jail if looks could kill. Oh, <laughs> say what up to the cutest ugly pie we know, our boy Phil. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Phil in the house. <laughs> yeah. Phil, thanks for being here, man. Long time coming. Very long time coming. Of mm-hmm. course, of course. This is dope. Um, I was actually yeah, thinking man. earlier, and I was like, well, I've realized that I've known you for like, I think at least a decade now, which if that doesn't make you feel old, it makes me feel old. And then I think that the story of us meeting is one of the funniest stories that I have with any one person because i think that the day we met it was at Foot Locker. we both worked at Foot Locker bramley city center and it was the day before my birthday and it was Mm -hmm. my birthday at midnight so we and we were doing an audit so we worked we worked until midnight so technically it was my birthday at midnight and i was like no no no, that's not when we met that was like the next day okay so it was like our first real interaction (laughs) then okay And I was like, does anyone want to go to McDonald's for my birthday? (laughs) At like midnight after an audit, Phil, who I had known for 32 seconds, was like, yeah, let's go. (laughs) We went to to McDonald's at like 1230 at night and ate McDonald's food. Ask him who else said yes. Did anyone else say yes? No one said yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just me. Phil's a good guy, bro. Imagine him. Yeah, imagine him. The the actual first time we met was training. Oh, I remember. My OG. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we it was a sunday morning you brought all the new guys in i think I know this story alvin was like had just transferred out or was just about to because i never had a shift with him at bramley but lawrence was the guy teaching us he did this weird thing where it's like he would give you a skew and you had to run and find it in the back <laughs> and this yeah. we're waiting yeah. around for tanya and then this guy comes up to me. I'm just wearing. I'm wearing. I think fire red threes. fire red threes i remember and then this guy goes hey man nice shoes i'm like oh thanks and i look uh, his he's got like mismate free freeze on <laughs> like mismates like a nine and a nine and a half yeah i'm like oh thanks i thought i had i was like oh cool i respect this guy and then i look at his shoes i'm like no i don't <laughs> but i'll go to mcdonald's with him for his birthday yeah, exactly yes and then we went to McDonald's. and imagine me being the kid with like super long hair like no idea what's going on in the entire world and just knowing <laughs> that those, those are fire red threes and telling phil mm-hmm. i think i might have even told you like Oh, be careful wearing nice shoes around here, man. Like they can get real dirty. As I stand there in like <laughs> shoes I had worn every single day for the last five years in a row. Like nice yeah, shoes, it, dude. It, it made me think like, oh, cool, yeah, this guy knows his shoes. And then I look down, I'm like, no, nah, he just thinks they're nice colors. <laughs> hey, man, I, I like your white and red Nikes, there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, look at those. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, uh, that's the story of me and Phil. Anywho, we've got a great show for you guys this week. We're starting with a fire round about. Or sorry, we're starting with a fire round from a healthcare worker, and then we'll be covering news of Nike trying to resell us dirty used sneakers. After that, we jump right into things with Phil as he plays Canada's favorite game, Twenty One Questions, before answering a few questions about his sneaker life during his solography. Then we take a quick peek behind the curtain into his employment with Jordan Brand before finally getting into a discussion about what we look for when we're buying a new pair of sneakers. Mm. So this will be interesting. Mm. But first, with the button, Joel! Whoosh, fire round! Oh my god. 
killed it, yo. Wow. Let's go. He wow. already had it on. I'm on it, yo. I'm ready and everything. He had it on. Yes, the fire round. We like to start every show with a quick hitting question from you, our listeners. And this week's question comes from Michael Indig, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Mm. In Indig. And he yep, says, yep. and this one's no. kind of ironic. Um, because I know that Phil has a has a deep dark past in the healthcare industry. Um, so this one is going to be uh, interesting. But he says, "Hey guys, I have a question for a future episode, and here it is. As a dental student, I'm on my feet a lot during the day. My scrubs are pretty cozy underneath my thousand layers of PPE, but it's the, my sneakers that I think a lot about before I start my day. Um, should I wear something firm, bouncy, hype, and so on? So my question is, if you were going to into an all day healthcare environment where you're on your feet from eight to five, what shoe would you choose? Thanks for the pod and go Habs go, he says. Um, so that's a tough one. I should have asked him what he typically goes with um, because mm-hmm. I feel like there's like a specific type of shoe for this. Like you need something that's going to repel like bodily fluids and also be comfortable. And I would also want to go with something hype. Um, so I'm going to steal actually Alvin's answer from the uh, Stacks episode, but I'll switch it a little bit. I'm going to go with the Air Jordan 3 White Cement JTH. Oh, so you got a little bit of hype. You got Phil's looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm sure he knows what actually goes on in the healthcare industry, and he's like, (laughs) "White shoes, okay." But yeah, white shoes. I feel like doctors wear white shoes, don't they? Like that's a thing. I'm a doctor. I'm not. They also don't touch patients. There you go. That's all me then, because I'm not getting anywhere near blood, poop, vomit. I don't want to. I don't want any part of that. So yeah, I'm going all white because doctors look slick as fuck in the all white you got like some semi comfort probably throwing like a spanko like gel insole in those bad boys for the all day comfort and then yeah you got a little bit of hype with like the oh shit that doctor's wearing white cement jordan threes like justin timberlake he's probably really smart so i'm gonna go with that um alvin what are you going with uh you know what i'm gonna go completely hype and do uh air max one at most elephant prints <laughs> <laughs> you got the leather <laughs> look at phil yo feels like yo these guys are fucking stupid you guys are idiots did they hear <laughs> the question <laughs> i mean yo they're comfortable <laughs> they're leather they'll repel something you know what <laughs> to jump on your team that teal swoosh Really looks like the teal scrub. It's color. gonna go with the scrub. Bro. Yeah, exactly. so I mean, that's a fit, bro. Who cares? Get Let's a fit go. off. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my choice. Oh, I know. God. I know it's Dang. dumb. I'm gonna probably regret it the first time I wear them. Yeah, day no one, kidding. first minute of putting my foot into the uh, healthcare area. <laughs> but whatever, man. Yolo. Wow. Damn. We clearly should have thought this through a little bit more. Uh, Joel, give us a better answer than ours. All right, so I'm going to wear um, Monarch, yo. There we go. Oh, yeah, like, boy. Know, like, <laughs> Even Sat but... and Phil was like, what the fuck? Yo, and, these guys and, and you know, can mow the lawn right after. <laughs> you know the Monarchs with, it's all like swollen and everything? Oh, the Pepto-Bismol. Oh, the Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> I'm going to wear those, yo. Because those the will be like, ones. yo, what are you wearing? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to wear those, yo. If a doctor walks in wearing that, monarch collaboration with the big bubbles on it i don't want that doctor assisting me i'll I'll take don't like just leave my arm broken it's fine i don't want (laughs) don't fix it uh phil give us the only correct answer please because like i said you have the past in the healthcare industry yeah okay so here you go for health healthcare is one thing because i would say the zoom pulse nike actually makes a healthcare provider shoe yes which is that's the boring answer industry approved Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> but you know it's completely it's wipeable. Correct. But I'm saying he's he's in dental school, so he doesn't yeah. he's not going to deal with half the bodily fluids that a, a you know, other healthcare professional might. So just want to pick something that's like he's good to stand on his feet for a long time because that seems to be his number one concern. Mm-hmm. And he says he's got PPE on, so he probably has booties covering mm-hmm. whatever True. the heat he has anyway. Ooh. So comfort's your only option at this point. I think he's got to go with some kind of something with boost or react. So maybe like an Ooh. ultra boost or something like that, or a, or a easy if you want to get hype. But he's gonna have booties on top of it. 
Yeah. I'm glad that one of the four of us took that question really seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the least, right person did. Yeah, the right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> any answer we gave was not going to be the right one anyway. So there you go, uh, Michael, and a former healthcare provider. Thank you for your service. Um, <laughs> uh, gave you the correct answer and the only correct answer. If you would like to submit a question for the fire round and have us answer it on the pod, please shoot us a message on Instagram or email us at CanadaGodSoul at gmail.com. Next up is the CGS picks. Each week, we all pick an upcoming sneaker to analyze, dissect, and give our thoughts on. Then we decide if it's poop, scoop, whoop-de-whoop, or Alvin's trademark phrase. C'est très joli. It's super cute. And uh, as we do, I'm going to go first because I'm really, really excited about this pair coming up. I don't know if I'm going to buy it. Maybe we'll get into that later when we discuss uh, what goes into us deciding if we're going to buy a sneaker nowadays. But uh, my pick is the LeBron 8 Low, previously known as the LeBron 8 Low V2, if we remember correctly, Miami Knights colorway so this shoe is coming back it's getting its first retro obviously um since it came out in 2011 this was like the follow-up to the uh south beach like it was essentially the low cut version of the south beach if you will um i think it might have even been more limited than the south beach lebron 8 if i remember correctly but anyways yeah so it's a low cut lebron 8 um white uh overlays with a big ass pink bubble and then you've got like the south beach teal and pink speckle splatter all over the upper um yeah i mean i think it's really cool that it's coming back because to me it is an iconic sneaker but uh i don't know if i'm gonna pick it up because i don't see myself wearing a lebron 8 low anytime soon unless i'm gonna bust out like you know some cargo shorts and a really really Mm -hmm. large t-shirt um, and maybe some no-show socks like I would have been wearing uh, in 2011. <laughs> Probably not. So really happy it's coming out, but uh, I'm going to call it just a cute for now. The LeBron 8 South Beach, I'm getting it no matter what. I need to get that shoe just for nostalgia's sake. But this one doesn't quite make the cut for me. So uh, just a cute. I'll call it just a cute. Um, Joel, what do you got? All right. So my pick is the um, the upcoming Supreme Nike Air Max 96 collabo um yeah so this shoe just by looking at it <laughs> it's it's got it's it's just like you know like the the mesh paneling on the 96 um you know it's sort of like striped kind of thing but these panels are all cut out and it's got the clear windows all over the shoe so you basically can see it's you can basically see your whole foot yeah, it's a, lo- it's a lot of windows. <laughs> yeah, it's not just the toe, like or or whatever, like on the clots, like the kiss of death. But, but it's your whole foot you're you're seeing. So, better be wearing some nice socks. And it looks like <laughs> there isn't any perforations in the. Oh, it's a winter shoe in here. So you know you're going to be like fogging up these windows. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they went with the proper midsole on the ninety sixes. As opposed to like the ones that dropped in 2016, mm-hmm. but they kind of dropped the ball on this one. This one here, it's like I've, it's the only color that's out right now. Um, so far, it's an all black shoe. Um, you have your red swoosh by the heel. You got your supreme branding on the tongue. There's like a banner that comes around the top of the tongue in supreme. Um, you have like a, a metal, looks like a metal piece on the heel sort of like a box logo kind of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a no-go for me. Um, but yeah, these are a complete whoop de poop or whatever you guys want to call it. But yeah, drop sometime this month. Um, but yeah, take a look at them. It's not, I don't know. It'll probably sell out. Yeah, like of all course. Supreme stuff, but yeah. I, don't know, I can't tell you how quickly I went from like 100 to zero. Because I saw yeah. the headline, like, Nike Air Max 96 Supreme Collaboration, yeah. and I was like, oh, shit, here we go. And then, and then you I, take a look at it, you're like, what the fuck? I was like, you can't fuck up an Air Max 96. What a great shoe. There's not much you can do. And then I looked at it, and I was like, how did you find a way to do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, why did you do that? Yeah, I don't I'm I not know. a fan of it at all, man. Like, I'm ho- hoping the last little bit of hope is maybe, like, the black one is the special one that has the clear panels, and then maybe the other ones Hopefully. don't. Like yeah. that seems like it could be a possibility, but it's a, it's a really <laughs> small possibility. But uh, yeah, I, 
Like so I can understand. Seems, it seems like the answer to the uh, Lil Nas X. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. The next one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I definitely that's think true. this shoe is Satanist as well. So yeah, <laughs> not a not a fan of this shoe. I do not like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alvin, what do you got? Please, something better than that. <laughs> I have the uh, next batch of M A Leon Doors uh, oh. five fifty. Okay. Um, you got Phil's I attention. I mean, they're similar to the other ones. I mean, dog, they're dope, bro. Um, so one of them has uh, a, like a yellow, but not really like a bright yellow. It's more of like a pastel-y, like pale Monster. yellow. Canary almost. Yeah, canary. Yeah, canary. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one's got like a red uh, end as well. But like same thing, man. Like the midsoles are already kind of pre-vintage, if you want to yeah. say that. But I mean... They haven't put out anything that I've been disappointed in, especially when it's New True. Balance. Um, so obviously they killed this one. I personally like these. Um, that 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 uh, raffle link came out earlier this week, so I definitely tried to get the yellow ones or the canary ones. Yeah, me too. I entered for the yellow as well, but I never. I mean, we have till the end of day, I guess, or tomorrow maybe to get an, a confirmation email. I got my confirmation yet. Is there? Two days ago, I like think you're on the a, VIP list. Yeah, there bro. was a separate. I, I, one I was on the like, early, the early yeah. access yeah. one. Yeah, you're on the early uh, access one. So my, I got mine. I got the green yellow one. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So it should be coming. I don't know. It still says unfulfilled when I log into my account. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe August 2022. Yeah. Jeez. For real. Do I have to wait for? Because I think you can. There was early access. Then there was the one that came out yesterday. Was it? Yeah. Or, yesterday yeah. or two days ago. Yeah. 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 Yesterday or two days ago. And then there is, I think it comes out on Friday at 11 for everyone. Yeah. Like oh. the regular drop. Mm. No reserve. So, okay. I mean, I don't know. I'm waiting. Hopefully, bro. I like, I really like that yellow canary pair. Yeah. Dope. Honestly, if I like when it comes in, I'm probably not going to wear this one anymore. The, uh, the red, I have red. a white and red one yeah. that yeah. I wear Ooh, sparingly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but I probably won't even. The, the yellow one's just so much nicer. Yeah, what did you guys clean. think of the whole pre-order thing they did with the thirteen hundred? I think it was like late to mid last year. They did a pre-order on their thirteen hundred NB thirteen hundred collaboration, um, and it was like limitless. Like I think you could just buy it for like a certain amount of days, and I think pairs just started coming in. I noticed that there's uh, quite obviously to me at least there's like almost no resale. Like they go for like two hundred bucks Canadian on StockX, like. Is this the future? Are you guys willing to wait like six months if you're guaranteed the shoe? What do we think? Especially for an ALD it has was, like, it was like a year, bro. Was it a year? <laughs> it's like, is that Closer the one that they two. said that if you bought that, you can get this one? Oh, was it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought I saw something that says like if you pre ordered one of the other ones, you get this one. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm making Maybe. shit up. <laughs> Who knows? That, that could I'd be... be down, man. If yeah, I'm you're... guaranteed a pair. Plus, like whenever that launched, it was probably like late, not really summer. Or maybe it might have been summer. I don't know. But either way, like I, I'd wait. If I'm guaranteed the pair, it's whatever. If I really like the shoe, then it doesn't matter when it comes in anyway. It's such a nice feeling. Like you forgot about it. And then a yeah. year later, you're just like, hey, your Ooh. shoe's on its way. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, we know about sneakers so far in advance, anyways, that, like, what's that? You're already waiting for it to come out, right? Exactly, like, if man. You see, like, what's coming out holiday 2021 for Jordan Brand, like, now. So like if they were like now you can pre-order it and then get it when it comes out then it's like what's you were gonna wait anyways like that's yeah. just when it was gonna be finished production. And you're guaranteed, so, bro. There's nothing yeah. just like oh I can't I don't have my yeah. confirmation email or oh I just took L's on the, the site. It's just like I'm it's coming. Yeah, I don't know when it's coming. <laughs> I don't know, but it is. But it's coming. Yeah, I think that's the only correct way to do pre-orders. Like I don't think you yeah. can go back to pre-order days like it was at Foot Locker where it was like concords are coming out you come in once the store already has stock allocated or the company already has stock allocated you're kind of just picking from that allocation i think if you're going to do a pre-order now it has to be before the shoe is even put into production mm-hmm. because like mm-hmm. you're either going to be lining up for the shoe when it comes out or you're going to be lining up for a pre-order so there's going to be riots six months in advance or there's going to be riots when the shoe comes out so like but if you're doing it before production then it's like everyone gets a pair who wants a pair i think that's yeah. the only way to do it properly and I don't know if everyone will be down with that because then you I have. I think a... it only sucks for like resellers. Yeah, exactly. Because clearly, like, like resellers who bought so many, who thought it was going to be hyped and get like they thought probably thought they were going to get it in like a month, and then the hype would still be like up there. Clearly, the hype's dead for that shoe now, just because yeah. no one's really posted it <clears throat> up until like a year after it released. So it's just like you know what I mean. But it's also knows, a thirteen hundred. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a personally a fan. Of you that know, shoe. maybe maybe it'll be like a Tesla though. 
when you just like came and you put your deposit in and then when the time comes, it's like yeah. peaking and Ooh. like you didn't order it, but now it's hype. Yeah, and now this true. reseller can sell it for so much more because mm-hmm. they've had the foresight to do it a year in hold, advance. Yeah, so it could go both ways. Well. Yeah, that's very true. Who knows? So I'm looking now and it looks like the, the pink 1300 is going, the, the lowest ask is 270 Canadian. What is yeah, that? That's basically bad. retail for a New Balance these days, isn't it? Like yeah, after so. tax and shipping, yeah. like mm-hmm. two seventy, like a made in USA one. Yeah, that's and how a collaboration. much New Balance costs. Yeah, man, you you <laughs> you have New Balances behind you. I mean, yeah, that was, <laughs> and you just that was like one hundred and thirty bucks, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Anyways, uh, oh, we didn't get to Phil. Phil, what is what is your pick for the week? I apologize. Ooh, it doesn't have to be coming out this week. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So it, it's hard to decide. I'm a one low guy. I'm a low shoe guy. And I couldn't decide between the three. There's a neutral gray oh, yeah. low one coming out. Mm-hmm. There's a particle gray, which is kind of like like a jade kind of color, all with the same blocking. And, and uh, the orange one that looks like it might be called starfish. It's yeah. the same kind. It looks like a reverse shatter, but without sale. Yay. So th- those three lows are coming out. I, I, at this point, it's all rumors, but I've seen several photos, <laughs> and I, I I need those, all three of those. All three. So if what's you, the good one? I was going to I was going to ask you to pick one, but if you're not going to even if you're going for all three, you're going for all three. I'm going for all three. If I had to pick one, I'll go for the 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 neutral gray. Neutral gray, mm, just because yes. of the the OGness. Just the OG ness, and I need to, I need it to be in lows. Did you I get got the high? Grays. Yeah, I, ha- I have them. Uh, have I even put them on yet? I don't know. I haven't even laced it yet, but I need to. I need a low. That sounds like low. an addiction to me. I mean, <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, I haven't even gone out, so <laughs> that's also very true. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right, sick picks all around. Next up this week in kicks, this is the part of the show where we discuss the current headlines and happenings in the world of sneakers. And this is kind of a big one this week. This kind of blew up the uh, internet for a while. Nike wants to sell you used shoes. Lucky us. So uh, in an effort (laughs) to move forward with their move to zero campaign and furthering their mission at becoming carbon neutral, Nike is adding a new service that will allow clients to return shoes within 60 days of their purchase. And Nike will then clean the shoe and sell them at a discounted price at their outlet stores. Um, so the program is called Nike Refurbished. The shoes will be classified into three categories, like new, VVNDS, <laughs> gently worn, <laughs> VNDS, and cosmetically flawed, 8 out of 10. Um, so the shoes that do not fit into any of these three criteria can still be donated or broken down into Nike grind material, which is then repurposed into shoes like the Space Hippie. Um, mm. which they literally just grind down old shoes and make new shoes out of them, which is also really cool. And it makes a cool pattern. Um, what do we think of this? Cause I feel like a lot of people were kind of off put by it, but I think I had like a contrasting opinion to it. But, uh, what do we think about this? Alvin, what do you, uh, what are your first thoughts on this whole refurbished shoe business? I like it, man. I thought it was pretty, uh, it's a pretty good move on Nike's part. Plus like with all the VNDS, Pass as DS, V, 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 and DS pairs that are going to be coming to the outlets. Like, it'll, you know, let people who can't really afford those dope V and DS pairs on Facebook just be able to hopefully cop them at the outlet or whatever. Yeah. 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 I mean, either way, it's good for, you know, both Nike and the quote unquote sneaker community just because, like, I don't know. I get, I'm assuming these will be more affordable. Like, they won't mark them up to be back to retail, but we i guess we won't know until it actually happens yeah it's 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 interesting i i agree i saw joel i saw you nodding your head you're yeah. you're down with this as well oh yeah for sure I th- it's a good push it's a yeah. good push for them too you know what i mean so just like what alvin said like for those that couldn't afford like you know dead stock pairs and then you'll have like ones that have been you know gently worn at a discounted price can't go wrong with that right so because i could be wrong but i think you could already return sneakers to nike within like the purchase even if you wore them and just say like i didn't like them or they didn't work for me i think you could already return them if Mm -hmm. i I mean someone let me know um in our dm if i'm wrong but i think you could already do that so the fact that they're going to i don't think you're gonna end up seeing you know off-white jordans (laughs) sitting in the outlet used but you may see like gr jordans that somebody tried and was like either they didn't like them or they mm-hmm. didn't fit or they were just like 
because in in this day and age it's like wear it once post it on instagram flex and then it's on to the next right so if you have an opportunity even just to do that and then someone else gets a shoe at a discounted rate i think it's dope and like Mm -hmm. the fact that they'll take back literally anything and then if it doesn't work out selling it then they'll uh grind it up and make it into another shoe i think it's all it's a great it's great marketing whether it be good for the environment or not it's really good marketing um but yeah phil are you down with this i know you were down with the uh that Nike grind basketball shoe. I don't remember what it's called, but the cosmic unity cosmic Um, unity. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm down for? I would have liked it. Well, you know what? When I think about it, it's probably going to be a really thin amount of shoes that are, are going to be going into this, this program. Yeah. It like, like you said, it's going to be like the eights to nines out of 10. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, they're they're going to be obviously going to the outlets. So you're talking about like the factory stores, the the whatever it's called, the unite stores and the community doors only. It's not going to go back to uh, like a regular yeah like a Nike Town or something like that, right? It's going to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it checks a lot of boxes for for everybody. Mm-hmm. So it's people who who need a, a break on the price of expensive sneakers, but it also helps Nike out. What do they do with a bunch of these shoes? That it helps solve the problem of the returns. Yep. Because they do get a lot of returns yeah. that are just not sellable as new shoes, right? Because no one's going to pay $255 for a Jordan if it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of money. So it, it, it helps everyone out there. And I think uh, all the ones that are, you know, they should still have something where they buy. Because it, it sounds like it's a return, right? So you get you get your money back for this shoe. Yeah, I, need, I or, want that part clarified. Because if they're going to sell it at a discount, they're losing money ultimately, it sounds like. So I, I, there's got to be some sort of in-between where they give you back right. like 50% of retail. I think that yeah. part is missing for me. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. But it sounds like you know, you're getting possibly your money back. Because they, you know, if, if they have that thing in process where it says, you know, if you don't like it for whatever reason, it hurts your feet, you can return it for a full refund. What do you do with that shoe? You can't sell that again for full price. Mm-hmm. So they're going to sell yeah. it at a discount or, you know, send it to Grind, like you said. Uh, and Grind is like, is super cool too. They take like what, like leather, rubber, EVA, foam, textiles, thermoplastics, and they make, have you ever been to like the world headquarters, the no. Bo Jackson, uh, f- the big floor flex, of the fitness big center? Flex, big flex. Big I've never been there. I've never <laughs> <Okay>. been there. <laughs> the insiders. I just know that the the floor in the Bo Jackson facility is made up of uh, stuff from the like, grind. Oh, that's cool. Um, cool. Also, the field that's out back there, and then also uh, you know Pigalle out there in the ninth. Yep. In the, in the in Paris, that court is also uh, from Nike Grind. It's from oh, Nike Grind rubber. Oh, that's so sick. it goes into cool. they go into making like a whole bunch of things from it. So I, I'd like to see them take take all that back, or even donate them. You know, yeah, that was like yeah. below well. an eight. It was like yeah, in between like completely beat and like non-sellable. There's got to be that mm. gray area. I think they said that donating is also an option. Mm. I think it should donate from like you know maybe five, four to seven yeah. out of ten. Donate yeah. those, and the rest just like you can you can put it to grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree I would with say. that. Yeah, um, but I think it, it helps everybody. It helps their. It definitely helps them. Like they're definitely benefiting. Otherwise, they wouldn't do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it's not something that's like completely out of the ordinary. Like you can walk into Best Buy and buy a refurbished phone. Like it's not yeah. like this. Like this right. has always been a thing. It's it sounds kind of strange when you bring it to sneakers because it's like, oh, it's going to be dirty, or they're selling me an old yeah. shoe. But like, it's uh, one. It's obviously not going to be regular price. And two, like if Nike is cleaning them, this is going to be professionally done. Like yeah. this is a brand that cares so much about their brand image that there's no right. way that they're allowing any like. They're not letting anything slip through. You're b- probably barely going to be able to tell it's it's been worn, except for maybe a few creases. And they mm-hmm. should have a bunch of just stock, like uh, insoles that they just replace. Yes, yeah. That would be a good so idea it too. gives you the sticker and like no one's like footprints indented in it. That's <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that's a good idea. So it feels that's new, good and that's like that costs probably nothing. I yeah. want to know which cleaner they're using. Is it Jason Mark? Oh. What is, what is it? To protect? protect? Yeah, what's going on? I want that. In, that's the insider information I want. What cleaner did they choose? Because I'm buying stock in that company for sure. <laughs> they're going to gonna need a lot of Jason Mark to start cleaning all those shoes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's interesting. I, I'm glad we all agree that it's, uh, there's a future in it for sure. I think that there's def- mm-hmm. I think more stores should definitely adopt this kind of thing, like Foot Locker. Mm-hmm. Walk into a Foot Locker with a shoe that you don't like anymore. They give you back 50% of retail. They throw it on a clearance rack to sell to whoever. Like I think people would eat that up for sure because it's not like oh, yeah. you're going to a value village and getting like a dirty old shoe. Like mm. you know, it's been like 
quote unquote refurbished, cleaned, whatever. Like it, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think you also, I think you also have to purchase these from Nike. Yes, that's correct. So, yeah. so you won't be able to get it at like a Foot Locker or a Sport mm-hmm. Check and return it there. No, I, I just meant that every store. Should, I think that Foot Locker should yeah. do something similar to that. Yeah, for sure. But it also seems like I think you can return it at non-outlets as well. Like just judging by their video, it looked like you could buy it online, go to your Nike store at Eden Center, return it there, and then they'll ship it to be I believe cleaned. there's a list. There's a list online of the stores that you can bring it to. There you go. We got all the on partial the, on the information Nike for everybody. You're yeah, welcome. I got a little bit of everything, which just confuses <laughs> everyone. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's dope. I, I like it. I'm ha- excited to see where it goes. Uh, yeah. Next up, previously in Kicks, this is the part of the show where we review our latest pickups and recap the latest happenings in our sneaker lives. And uh, I'll go first. I'm excited. It was a surprising week. So uh, Adidas. Are you guys tired of hearing about Adidas yet? Because they have been showing an unlimited amount of love lately. They sent over <laughs> first the uh, Human Race uh, NMD by Pharrell in a triple pink colorway. You had me on triple pink, to be honest. The boost <laughs> is just a bonus. But uh, yeah, man, dope, dope, dope ass shoe. I'm glad that they're like steadily doing the Human Race because I think it's something they should always kind of have in line, like a Jordan 1, where it's not like... Here's four pairs. We retired it for eight years. Like it definitely should be something that they kind of consistently bring out. So really dope there. And then uh, like last minute, uh, all of a sudden, like right before the podcast, almost the uh, ZX 8000 Sean Walderspoon Super Earth showed up. And I- I'm not going to lie, man. Like when I saw pictures, like we've been talking about this shoe since like September when <laughs> Sean Walderspoon first previewed it. I wasn't in love with it. Like, I don't know if it's just because Sean Watherspoon's photos are absolutely terrible or what, but like... I <laughs> Is that just... how you say his name? Watherspoon, yeah. Why? Oh, I, th- I thought you had like an inner ear problem or something. How do you say it? <laughs> I don't know. I just hear everyone say Weatherspoon. Yeah, I think it's Watherspoon. It's W-O-T-H. <laughs> yeah, but I mean like it's Paige Beckers and not Paige Buchers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I will ask him next time he's on the podcast. We'll, we'll ask, ask him, him Lowrens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely Watherspoon. What the hell? I don't know. I think you just have lazy English, my friend. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen it spelled that way a million times, like every time, but I've never heard anyone say it that way. Well, obviously it's spelled it's that way every time. Way. That's how you spell his name. Yeah, <laughs> but, how, but who says it that way? Is that how it? Has he said it? I don't know if he's ever said his own name. I can't confirm. <laughs> I'm gonna. Hey, it's Sean Wathers. My name is Sean Wathers. It's definitely <laughs> Watherspoon. not Witherspoon. Hey, it's Sean Weatherspoon. <laughs> I'm the founder of Round Twelve. <laughs> well, <laughs> because Reese Witherspoon, well. her last name is spelled different. Oh my god! That's yeah, it. it's with an I. Yeah, Witherspoon. <laughs> Wither. Wither. Reese Witherspoon. Oh, Wither. Sean Watherspoon. <laughs> Anywho, right in the chat, guys. Like, even DM this guy, <laughs> please. We maybe we'll do correct like a, him. I don't know. We'll, we'll do correct like a me. Poll. Yeah, we'll do an Instagram poll on Saturday and see how do you pronounce Sean <laughs> Blanks, Sean W's last name. <laughs> I was just asking. I was like, is that how you say his name? First of all, I'm not taking a stance. Uh, I'm trying to learn. Definitely felt like you were taking a stance. You <laughs> claimed for, that I, I had a I health need educative purposes. <laughs> yeah, inner ear problem. <laughs> you claimed that. Anyways, back to Adidas. Thank you, Adidas. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, the Sean W ZX eight thousand. Um, I wasn't a big fan just based on pictures, but then so Alvin got them in hand first today, and he was like, "Guys, these are incredible." And I, you just by his picture. Alvin's shitty Oof. picture that he took with his phone really quickly was better than any picture that Sean W <laughs> posted over the course of the last eight months. Um, and then I got mine. I was literally laying in bed, like being a potato. And then all of a sudden the door rings and it's UPS. And th- it, lo and behold, there it is. And I opened it and I was like, oh, shit. Like, these are actually really, really good. Like, details are phenomenal. I don't want to say that it's better than the 97 one that he did with oh. Nike. I'm not saying that. <laughs> the details are definitely no better. No one should. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> the the details are definitely better. The execution, it seemed like he had a lot more freedom. We'll say that. Even though mm. he had almost an unlimited amount of freedom with the 97 one, like he built it from the ground up, there's stuff that Adidas let him do that Nike would have never let him do. So, yeah, if you were on the fence, I think that the they come out the day that this podcast drops. Try for them. That's all I got to say. They are very well done. Um, Joel, anything for you in the last week? 
Nope, nada. Nada for Joel. Alvin, nada. Alvin had a busy week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also got the S dubs. Now um, one, everyone's self conscious. Now the S dubs. <laughs> the the Sean Waterspoon. There we uh, go. Yeah. Eight thousands again. Super dope. My favorite part is probably probably the burlap sack. Toba. That is technically the the mesh, mm. Mm. Uh, and also just the embroidering of the tray foils on the the inside of, or sorry, the inner part of the upper. Um, super dope details, man. I'm probably gonna cut the string. You know the excess string yeah, where the I flowers are. I'm, I think I'm gonna cut that because if I step in a puddle that has mud in it, it's probably gonna <laughs> splash and shit. Yeah, it's gonna. Uh, I don't yeah. want that. Yeah. Woke up. Um, but yeah, I got those, the S dubs. Um, I also so shout out to uh Capsule Toronto for their raffle. I won yo, again, I, that's like probably my second win from Capsule in five years. <laughs> when did the uh cause drop? Yeah. <laughs> the cause fours with your last one. Cause right? fours. Yeah. But yo, I see that's a big win. And then so is this. I got the bacon 90s. Uh, they're on the way because curbside pickup is no longer a thing. Um, but yeah, shout out to Capsule for the dope raffle and actually get, getting a dub from them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And then by the time this episode drops, I hope that I get a confirmation email from <laughs> Emily on door. <laughs> Speaking but probably of not. <laughs> and that's it. You know, that's it I have you. to say something before Phil says his pickups. Have you guys noticed? Because Phil just did it. That jeez, that that's been like trending lately on like Instagram and stuff. There's like a sound clip of it like trending. I think on Instagram and TikTok. Has it? People are yeah. s- spelling it and saying it. Sheesh, sheesh. And I can't tell you how. That's anno- like Watherspoon. Yeah, but <laughs> except it's wrong. Like <laughs> it's like Watherspoon, but wrong. It's so frustrating. If they're not giving royalties to Ian Medford, then I don't <laughs> want to hear about it. Ian no, was the first Ian, person yo. I ever heard say that. And it's G's. J E E E E E E E Z E. G's. And people are saying, yeah. And the clip, you can clearly hear it as a Toronto man, you know. It's G's. And everyone's typing it, sheesh. And it's really. Sheesh. That's annoying, man. That's annoying. <laughs> I had to, yeah. All the no. millennials. They don't know, man. They don't know Ian from Bramley Foot Locker in 2012. Know they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Hey, is that my sale? That's my sale. Anyway. <laughs> Yo, fam. Yeah. <laughs> That's my sale. Yeah, the head tap for the braids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ian's not listening, but shout out to Ian. Um, <laughs> I don't think he listens to any podcasts, audiobooks, anything like that. Anything that's not soca music is not in his headphones. Uh-huh. Uh, Phil, any pickups? Maybe not necessarily in the last week, but in the last little while for you. What is my last? I don't know if I've had anything come in. Probably neutrals was my last one. I see clock which behind you. Been, that's Miguel's. So there's oh, a okay. bunch. Like honestly, there's a lot of pickups. This is not mine. Okay, so the the ALD is coming in. I don't know when it's fulfilled. <laughs> it's order unfulfilled still. <laughs> but there's a yeah, there's a clot there. I think that was a soul savvy assist. Nice. Mm. Um, shout out to soul savvy. Soul yeah, um, they pay the bills for Miguel. Yeah, <laughs> they pay. Yeah, they pay for this room. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anna's got a lot of stuff. She got the uh, she got the soup dumpling Yeezy. Yeah, I saw those. Mm. How do you um, feel about those, Phil? You're not on the payroll, so how do you feel about it, them? It look it, honestly, I would wear it. It looks comfortable. It looks like it's very small, mm. like very, very small. She yeah. wears a size five. That maybe is why. Just <laughs> you know, and she put it on, and it's like your foot stretches it out and gives it the oh, size. Like it's, it's very tight. She said it was tight. Also, hmm. um, she got foam runners. Or no, wait, what am I saying? Yeah, is that is that the sandal? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 foam, yeah, whatever that is. That that one I wanted to. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't get that, but I honestly didn't try, so I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess no recent pickups. Just waiting for my fulfilled order. Wow, we asked Phil if he picked anything up, and he did a live edition of Anna's Mail. That was dope. Thank you. Very yeah, much. that's a preview. Guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's it. I that's... unbox a lot. That's why I felt like I had something, but none of them were mine. <laughs> Nothing is yours. <laughs> I guess not. Jeez. 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 <laughs> Sheesh. Sheesh. I hate it. I just absolutely hate it. Sheesh. Sheesh. 
Sheesh. Oh, Sheesh, Mother Spoon. Sheesh, Mother Spoon. I need, we're going to do a poll. Two <laughs> polls. Is it G's or Sheesh? And is it Wather Spoon or whatever <laughs> Phil said? Witherspoon. 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 It's not an E. Anyway, we could do this. <laughs> we can go all day. English is a stupid language. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> next, next up, thumbs up, thumbs down. In this part of the show, we give our opinion on various sneaker related topics with zero context or discussion. All we're allowed to say is, thumbs up or thumbs down and this week i want to know thumbs up thumbs down to zipper closures no laces no velcro no slip on zipper joel down (laughs) i'm gonna go down as well fuck alvin up hmm Phil. This is this is the thumbs, not whether you wear it up or down. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go up. Yeah, not whether the zipper is up or down. Whether you're I'm thumb, gonna go thumbs up. I'll go thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up, bro. <laughs> All right. Done with that. Next up, NSRGs. Next up, we talk about sneakers a lot. So in this weekly segment, we're gonna take 30 seconds out of the show to discuss something completely irrelevant to the world of sneakers. And uh so once in a while when I can't think of an NSR. When there's no food to talk about during NSR, I Google it, and it never <laughs> fails to disappoint. So the uh, NSR this week is, if you could live in any cartoon for one week, which one would you live in and why? So while you think about this, I'm going to answer. And I was in between a couple of them. And you can let me know if this doesn't count, because cartoon to me doesn't just mean... Cartoon is a style doesn't just mean TV show, car- cartoon TV show. It could mean movie. So before anyone steals it, I'm going to go Space Jam. Um, and there's 100 reasons why, and 99 of them are Lola Bunny. But the other one is because <laughs> you get to play basketball with the, the tunes for an entire week. And nothing can hurt you, and you can stretch really far and you know play basketball really well. So I'm going to go, I would live in Space Jam. I was a big Bugs Bunny fan growing up as well. So I'm going to go, I would live in Space Jam for a week. Um cool. Alvin. Alvin's thinking hard about this. Alvin is stressed out. So many cartoons, bro. So many. Thundercats. There's like, bro. He-Man. Bro, X-Men. You're, you're going with like, violent. You want to live in violent places? Hell yeah, bro. Know, you gotta, <laughs> but you got to wake up and just fight? Yeah. All the time. Why why you you man there, just wakes up and puts on that sports bra and he just kind of fights someone. Hey, hey, man. I got daughters now, so I got to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be ready as fuck to fight. Bro. You gotta be ready. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in the middle. Not too violent, but still some action. I'm gonna go Ninja Turtles. Okay. Um, cool. One because Splinter seemed like a cool dad. Uh, <laughs> two because you know, depend. I- I'd probably be Donatello because I'd want to have some smarts or some brains. Um, but like my brothers are pretty cool. You know, Donat, Michelangelo, Raphael, and all those guys are pretty dope. Um, plus. Yo, the diet is pizza, bro. Yeah, it's true. True. It's a lot of pizza. Yeah, all week. But where's the house? <laughs> yeah, you the, live in the it's sewer. It's in the sewer. The sewer. Yo, yo, fancy, have you seen? <laughs> it's fancy, bro. It's bougie. They can play video games and have all those screens and shit. Like, you're good. It's a imagine fancy the, sewer. Imagine the hub you can watch on all those screens. Yeah. Jeez. It's, it's a VNDS <laughs> 9 out of 10 sewer for sure. It's definitely <laughs> higher quality sewer. Like, <laughs> definitely higher quality sewer. Um, Joel, any cartoon oh, you can man. live in for a week, what are you going with? Um, I'm gonna have to go with like Dora the Explorer kind of thing, cause she what could go hell? anywhere. Like in this pandemic, yo, you could like break up the map from your backpack and just like <laughs> the map. I'm the map. Like it comes out. No swiping. Like, no swiping. Yeah, but you gotta no watch swiping. out for swiper, yo, because you know you can swipe your shit. Yo, you got your you got your cousin Diego too. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, man. See, cheese, cheese, anywhere, cheese, cheese. Wow. And yeah, I guess that's kind of in between violence, similar to uh similar to Alvin's answer. You got swiper, but that's really the only violence you would encounter. Yeah. You get to it. talk to animals and stuff. You got And your all best... you gotta say to him is just no swiping. Yeah. No swiping. And he just stops. Yeah. Alvin can't stops, say, right? yo, Master Shredder, stop shredding. Like he's not yeah. gonna stop. April O'Neil though. April yeah. O'Neil. Oh. Come on. It's yeah. Problem, Come on. She's you're a not, problem, guys. You're not is wrong. she into yeah. the bestiality? You're a turtle, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's gonna she's you're gonna make out with the turtle. You claim you're a turtle. Don't tell us we're trying, dog. Moving on. <laughs> Phil, you can live in any cartoon for a week. Where are you living? 
Oh, on the spot. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to be in The Simpsons. I, I thought just about like, that too. I yeah. thought about that. No, <laughs> if I if I had my my dream, if I could be a person, it's a mix of like Bart and uh, Will from Fresh Prince and yep. Zach Morris. Nice. So, yes. so wow, I have to go with Bart. And if I, you know, they had they got shoes. I can buy some assassins. Yeah, <laughs> I could wear some assassins. I could just I carry a slingshot with a Slurpee, bro. You I'm know, into comics. Yeah, Jeez. and then and that's it. And then Duffman beer, you're good to go. That's true. There you go. Look at yeah. that. I never, I'm never in jail. All the stuff I do, I don't go to jail. Holy. Yeah, just the next episode happens. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the Simpsons. I live in Springfield. That's not a bad answer. Um, wow, good answers mm. all around, actually. All right, next up, errors, edits, and e messages. We are pretty smart guys, but from time to time we make mistakes. So if you catch us slipping, hit us in the DM, and we'll let the world know that we goofed. And uh, so we will acknowledge. We got like eight thousand DMs. Yeah, yeah, we messed up the episode number last week. That, I'll take the L for that. That wasn't um, that wasn't Jeff's problem. He did. He is the one who announced that it was the wrong episode, but it was under my direction that he said episode one sixty four when it was one sixty three. So to everybody who made sure to tell us, hey, you said the wrong episode at the beginning. We know. Obviously, we know. We're not new here, but uh, yeah. So the uh, actual E E E because those ones don't count comes from Marco Papito, and he says, question for the pod, seeing more and more of these custom, in quotations, Air Jordan 1 silhouettes, where where a site will let you choose any replacement for the swoosh that you want, similar to the Lotus Dunks, wanted to know your thoughts. So I don't know if you guys have seen these. There's like these websites where you can literally choose like anything for a swoosh on like, let's say a Jordan 1. You can put like a gun, Statue of Liberty, you put a penis, you put whatever you want. You put like anything on the side instead of a swoosh. Um, and you're not mass producing it. So you're not worn lotusing it. You're literally just like, yo, I want to have like a dog bone instead of a swoosh on the side of my shoe. And he just wants to know our thoughts. Maybe we'll do a thumbs up, thumbs down on it because I think it's going to be pretty black and white. I'm thumbs down. Alvin. Down. Joel. Super down. Phil. Down bad. Yeah. Oh, down bad. You're so trendy. Look at you. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> and then your ALD hat. Um, it's, it's Twitch. It's I don't know Twitch. any of the things I hear on Twitch. I just repeat it. That's, <laughs> that's the way to success, man. Just mm-hmm. say what the other cool kids are saying. Um, yep. All right. Thank you, Marco Papito, for the question. All right. It is time for our guest, Phil. Once again, f- thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Um. Yeah. We like to start our guest interviews with what we call 21 questions. You're basically going to get 21 questions. I need you to answer them as quickly and as accurately as you can. Cool. Just remember there are no right answers, but there are also no wrong answers. Are you ready? Yes. One down. Thank God. Woo. 20, 20 more. 20 more to go. 20, 20 22 more. questions. Question, <laughs> question number one, red or blue? Red. Question number two, air or boost? Air. Question number three, original boxes or drop fronts? Original boxes. Even as he sits in front of shelves of neither. You didn't give me the options, man. <laughs> That's true, I yeah. would say none. All my boxes go in the garbage. That just hurts my soul to hear that. <laughs> Question number four, <laughs> pineapple on pizza? Sometimes. Some, that's okay. That's really non politically correct. Okay. Question. I don't order it, but I, I like it. Okay. That, well, that, that means yes then. Question number five. Okay. Crew socks or no shows? Crew. Question number six. Favorite shoe to hoop in ever? Uh, Kobe 3 AD 360 NXT. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. NXT so. 360. This, uh, yeah. The white and orange one. Is that one of the newest ones? It is, uh, the grippy ones, right? It's the it's the it's the drop in sole that oh, came out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, question number seven. What shoe did you wear today? You know what? I stayed inside all day, but I did put on those deltas I showed earlier, <laughs> <laughs> just to see how it felt. Just, yeah. Just the, to make the sure Jordan, the Jordan Delta SP Vachetta Tan. Just to make sure you wanted it to be your answer for the stock yes. question. You had to make sure. I like the yes. research uh, R and D there. Question number eight: What is a color that belongs on every shoe? Sale. Oh yes, absolutely. Question number nine: Dunks or Jordan ones? Jordan ones. Question number ten: What sneaker do you wear the most? One lows. Uh Travis one lows. Oh. Question number eleven. Glow in the dark or three M? Uh three M. 
Question number 12, Kobe line or LeBron line? Kobe line. Question number 13, who is the most influential person in sneakers right now? Influential person in sneakers right now. Sean Watherspoon. (laughs) (laughs) I just, this is why it took 164 episodes to have Phil on the podcast. (laughs) Question number 14, would you rather go a half size up or a half size down? Half size down. Question number 15, what is 28 times 29? I don't know. 812. You were close. Question number 16. What are three sneaker heading essentials? Three sneaker heading essentials. Oh, uh, three essentials are, uh, you know, you need a shelf. Mm -hmm. You need. (laughs) Oh, you need a smartphone. Oh, that's very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, money. (laughs) (laughs) That's very true. One, two, and three are probably money. Question number 17 (laughs) is a hot dog a sandwich? No. Question number 18 What is 29 times 28? 812. Is that that the right answer I get, right? He got it. (laughs) Yo, you know what's funny is that when you you meet me and you say, like, hey, I'm Joel, uh, and I go, hey, nice to meet you, I'm Phil, I don't know your name instantly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> forgotten it remembering my own name <laughs> so you're saying we should be impressed that you remembered yes the, the that answer is very, that gave that, if that's the right answer then that, that is the correct impressive. answer that's very well done by you question number 19 when are you giving anna a ring uh like a phone call i'll call her in a bit because i'm hungry because hey, i'm cook? hungry <laughs> Yeah, I got some Hawaiian pizza down here. Yeah, <laughs> written on the phone. Question number 20. What is your number one grail? My number one grail is a Chicago one high. Ooh, very nice. Question number nice. 21. Would you rather receive your number one grail or three other pairs from your top 10? Three other pairs from my top 10. <laughs> quantity for Phil. Give me the quantity and pairs that he doesn't have already. Um. All right, you f- you fared quite well on twenty two questions. Well done. Question number nineteen. You kind of paused and you didn't give an answer, but we'll let that pass. Um, Which one was that? When are you giving Anna a ring? Um, oh, I'm on a time <laughs> limit. I was on a two year time limit that started two and a half years ago. I don't know. <laughs> oh shit! You're expired. <laughs> <laughs> we'll treat it like medicine. You can still. We're still good after yeah, that. But, <laughs> but it's still good after. It's yeah. like raw pasta. Like it's good <laughs> until forever, right? <laughs> um, all right. So before we get into uh, a couple more discussions here, we want to know just kind of what got you into sneakers in the first place. How did you get started in all this? I know you're an old man, so this is probably going to be like a back in my day kind of story. But uh, oh, yeah. what got you into sneakers in the first place? Um, I used to visit my family in Chicago a lot. And I have like this uncle who's like a a surgeon and he would always take us to like go buy shoes when we went there. I guess that was his thing. He's like, you pick up whatever shoes you want. And back then we would just go to whatever shoe store my dad was getting shoes at and we would just go to the kids section and and get them. So every time I knew I was going well with my uncle Greg, I was getting a pair of shoes and I would just pick from whatever they had in the store. We would never go to a second store because if they didn't have what I wanted in my size, I would just go to the next shoe that was on the wall that I I would take. Um. And then I guess I was just always getting these shoes that I can only get in the States. For some reason, I just picked those because I would come to Canada and people would be like, hey, where'd you get those? I'm like, I don't I don't know. In Chicago. <laughs> some store. <laughs> yeah, some store. I don't even know. And then uh, that just became a tradition. And I've just been in shoes ever since. And like going out with my Uncle Greg was like the first time I would say I would admit to being a sneakerhead or being into shoes. That's like the first time I actually chased a shoe was um, seeing the Air Max CW for the first time uh, in here in, in like Brampton, actually. And then I went look into Chicago saying, like, this is the shoe I'm going to get. I know the shoe I'm going to get for the first time before I even go into the store. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they didn't have it. <laughs> I, needed a, I needed a seven and a half. And uh, that size like does not exist anywhere in, like, any shoe store. Um, so we went to, like, five different stores there was no internet we went back to the house yep. i'm using the phone book to call all of these <laughs> i know a Foot Locker, and i don't know any other american shoe stores <laughs> yeah. and then i find one that is in like the south side of chicago and my uncle's like we have to go here to go get your shoe i'm like yeah <laughs> and then we went there and i 
like I bought it like right there and there was like a undercover cop with like a gun on his hip I was like this is like a very dangerous place and that, at that point I knew like I would do whatever to get shoes and the rest is history as and the rest say. is history because those shoes lasted two months <laughs> so the next time you went back you also went not even uh yeah i went to california after that in december that was in september right before school and then in december i bought air penny ones and that was Jeez. the new shoe and mm. then the rest was really history after that and that's it. I, I know you were super into all the 90s basketball stuff at one point too right yeah yeah uh, that i would only buy 90s basketball shoes and then there was no cross trainer. There was no like casual shoe. After you were done playing basketball and that, and you got a new basketball shoe. Your old basketball shoe became your outdoor shoe. <laughs> That's how it worked. I like it. Um, yeah. So what's kind of keeping you into sneakers now? Because you are sitting in front of a wall of non Nike basket or uh, '90s basketball sneakers. So uh, what's keeping you into sneakers now? All like forty five years later. Um, <laughs> forty five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was nursing, I was kind of like almost. Like out of the game, I had tweeted a couple of times, like who who wants free shoes? Oh, like I come got get a lot them at my parents. Shoes. Yeah, um, I would just say like I have no space for these. Like whatever, come get them for free. Just come get take them. So I was out of the game really, um, and then you know kind of ran out of money in nursing school, and I got that Foot Locker job part time, and that got me back into it. And uh, I used to just buy basketball shoes, and now I'm like looking at basketball shoes, and I really like them, but I don't need more than one or two. Yeah. So I don't, I don't understand. I used to have like six or seven in rotation at a time. Um, and now it's just like casual shoes or like when I see something I like, it's different. It's different these days. Cause when you had money before you would just spend it on shoes and figure out the rest. Mm-hmm. And now obviously you always have money. If you've wanted shoes, you you can just buy the shoes and then <laughs> figure out your rent <laughs> later. But, but like, I don't know. It's just like, I have to be selective. We have so much like still limited space. So we have a f- kind of a one in one out rule that no one listens to in this house. <laughs> so when like five shoes are coming in a week, I'm supposed to let five shoes go. Um, yeah, okay. But that's not that's not going to happen. So that's kind of what goes through my mind right now. Uh, is is like, do I need these shoes? Like things are really nice. Like I'm obviously going to buy the cool gray 11s when they come out. I love that shoe. Am I ever going to wear it? Probably not. I don't know. I, I buy it with the intention of wearing it because it looks sick, but I probably won't. Yeah, it's not a pair you're going to reach for to actually wear unless you're wearing sweatpants and going to the convenience store and you're just like, eh, I'm going to wear cool gray 11s. It's yeah, it's right. not a shoe you're so going to throw on. It, yeah. So it's just like, what, what do I want to wear every day or what will I get wear out of? I really don't want to buy shoes I'm not going to wear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Except for cool gray 11s. Um, Except for cool gray 11s. <laughs> I, I must say I was the we don't even work even close to the same size. Actually, we work closer to the same size now somehow. But uh, yeah, I was definitely the beneficiary of that uh, closet cleaning extravaganza <laughs> that you threw. It's funny because I think it was like last year you hit me up and you were like, "Hey, do you still have those high hairs that I the sold high you? hairs? Yeah, in like what 2011? You're like, do you still have those size ten high hairs? And I'm like, no, bro. I think I donated those to Salvation Army. <laughs> And there actually, was the De, the honestly, De La Souls uh, that you sold me for twenty dollars. Yeah, twenty dollars. <laughs> I gave them to Joel. Joel has them still. Joel has my De I La Souls. So. The De La Soul low. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are, Joel, do you still wait? Do you, are you wearing the? Do you still own or who owns the Air Max One? The that's Animal. Or, yeah, the Animal One. Yeah, I, I still got it. Yeah. See, I got. I yeah, I think Peter called Peter. dibs on that one. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was just, I put like 10 shoes away out of like the whatever hundreds I had. And then I, I let people leave work and come to my house to pick up whatever they could fill their car with and then just leave. Um, I didn't, I didn't I, know. I actually didn't know that those came from you, Phil, because I know that Joel got them from Peter and he traded mm-hmm. red foam posits for red them. Red foam posits, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that that originally came from you. Interesting. There's a, yes. And yeah. the, the thing that you're saying, like we're closer to the same size, I haven't, like, I'm, still the same size but when you ask the question of whether you size up or down i always size down now just because i just like the way it looks rather than like mm. be, be comfortable because honestly <laughs> a jordan one in my size versus a jordan one that's a little smaller but looks better makes no difference to me this is 1984 technology it's yeah. gonna, i'm gonna hurt okay <laughs> it's michael jordan was supposed anyways. to wear this for an hour yeah <laughs> like you know to, once every other day i'm out here eight hours a day standing 
So I just want it to look better. Um, so we're not the same size, but but we're closer now in the in the pairs that you we're, buy. We're yes. shoe guys, you know. We're like I'm I'm nine to eleven. Yep, team every yeah, size, bro. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. What size you got left? That's what size I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so speaking of Jordan Brand, um, you did have a little stint there after your your nursing extravaganza, uh, mm-hmm. where you were working with the brand. Um, do you want to just sort of give a rundown of what you were doing with uh, JB for a while there? Yeah, I was uh, when Jordan Brand came to Toronto after All Star All Star Weekend. They built a, a the Jordan store and they had a brand space on top of it, separate from the retail space. Uh, the re- retail space was actually run by Foot Action, and then the brand space was operated by like Nike. Um, so I was the brand space manager of that of the the store the spot on top of the store, which housed Center Twenty Three and uh, all things that were Jordan brand. In, in Toronto it was supposed to be the hub of all Jordan brand in Canada. Um, so I managed that there. We had workouts there and we would do stuff with like um, athletes and um, brand partners um, organizing events. And, and basically the role kind of expanded into other areas of experiential marketing. Um, so we organized a, a bunch of different things uh, with, I was working with an agency or several agencies whatever agency had Jordan brand at the time is the agency that I would go to. Um, and we would, we would organize different events around uh, product launches and, and events, special events like that. And what were like, I remember I'm trying to think of when you took over, but I know that the like uh Jordan brand skateboarding thing, I think that was while you were there. Like when you guys put the quarter pipe in the basement, mm-hmm. um, what else? Everything. Like I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the Justin Timberlake thing when he showed up, that was your time as well. Yeah. Uh, so that, 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 that all falls under like whenever the store was open, like from store or like it was a pop-up in 2016 for all-star. And then they had to close it for like 18 months or whatever to do rentals. And when it reopened, I think like in May 2017 or something like that, or 20, I don't even remember. It was a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was a long time. That's when everything that happened experientially in there, was was I was a, a little bit a part of at least. Do you have a favorite um, activation that you like spearheaded or a part of, or that you can remember, or a couple of them? Because I'm sure it's hard to choose. Yeah, the the one you talked about was really cool. Um, the Jordan One Low, uh, when it was when it just came out, the Fat Low, that mm-hmm. one came out again, and we did we built like the little mini ramp in the in the basement uh, part of of the store at 306 Young. Uh, we got to work with the dr- the Drift team. Yes. Um, yeah, and then like kind of seated them and shot like a, a promo video. I don't think he, I think it was. I might have just been for internal use. Um, it was cool to see us like. That's when we were kind of tasked by the brand to come up with something around the launch, and you can like kind of just come up with your idea, throw it out there, and then if they approve it, then you can run with it, and they'll say like produce it. So that was one of the first ones that we got to do. Um, also, the Jordan Women's for the Vogue was oh, one of yeah. my favorites because we had that was uh when the brand manager left we actually got to do a lot of like the ideation and creating like some of our ideas and pitching it to what we wanted to do so it was for like uh the women's vogue jordan anna winter uh, three and then we uh took an over an art gallery gave them a women's brunch uh they got to like create their own scent. So there was like a, a, a perfume person there to like uh, sort of, they can just put all the notes and whatever and create their own scent. They got to learn how to like make uh, their own remix, their own clothing. And then they had like a photo shoot and all, and, and all that. So it was, it was pretty cool to get to you know, mm-hmm. se- select the women that were going to take part in that um, come up with like the venue really produce the whole thing and then find talented up and coming creatives to like do the remixing and the photography and all that and the videos. And what kind of like goes into that stuff? Like how do you go from like the brand approaching you and saying like, okay, there's a Jordan one skateboard coming back out. Like, do they just kind of say like, okay, go. Or is there like an in between where it's like, we want to do something centered around this. And then that's how you do it. Like I've always wondered because like, there's obviously these activations all around the world for various different things that nike and jordan do but like Mm -hmm. is this like a directive from up above where they're like okay this is the idea we had make it work or is it like them saying 
we don't know what to do, figure it out kind of thing? Well, we're still very much like we would look at, at Nike and Jordan as a client. So we're still very much on the outside. We're not within the bubble. Um, so we would get a brief from them. So I, I think it's just like you pick what things you want to stand for this year, right? So in, in like one year, they'll be like, okay, you know what? The 34 we had to stand for no matter what. That was the game shoe. You got to do something around that. You got to do something around the Jordan women's and you got to do like they'll pick some things for season. Every season you got to stand for something. And then they'll say like they'll give you like what your call to action is. Like we want to do an, a retail activation. So come up with something centered around this. And then you can basically just use all of your ideas, come up with a cool concept, and then pitch it back to them. See, they'll give you a budget of how much you have. And then you can say like, oh, you know what? For this one, we want to have a party. And it's going to be like influencers and whatever. And you can come up with whatever you wanted. And that's what was cool about um, the the launch of the 34 because we yeah. really had the most uh, input in that. That was like from start to finish, we came up with – everything there on our own and we were basically running independently that, that we didn't have anyone looking over our shoulders at that point it was just like Sick. you guys <laughs> yeah it was just us so we just came up with we're like oh we want to do like a retail build where we you know i remember coming up with the idea of using like the toronto house of illusions thing of mm. like because of the 34 so yeah. weird looking let's make it like let's take inspiration from this weird museum that we have where everything looks like an illusion and we'll just come up with a bunch of different illusions and then have them have them represent each part of the shoe for the 34. And I thought it was really, really cool. And because it's like a retail build, it's not going to really go far, but I just think that I'm most proud of that one just because of how much input and how much work we did start to finish. And when you see something like you just imagined and it comes Comes to life, comes to life, you're just like, it's just impressive. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I don't want to say dream job, but that's a that's a sick job to have. That's uh, this is very fun. Yeah, yeah. that's a very dope ass job. job. So this is kind of something just to kind of close it out that we touched or you touched on a little bit earlier. Kind of like what goes into us buying a pair. Um, you've mentioned many times, and you guys are always posting you and Anna on your Instagram about like mm. space is an issue, and especially for you guys because you have the shelving set up. That it's like there's a specific number of slots available in those <laughs> shelves right. um, for yeah. certain pairs. <laughs> So, and I think for all of us, we've had to go through this. Alvin has had his second child. Um, Joel, like the shelves are like bursting at the seams right now. <laughs> so I want to know kind of like what goes into your decision when you're buying a pair, but kind of like just to, to lay the, the groundwork for it, what used to go into your decision making when you were buying a pair? Um, like for me, at least, like when I used to be buying a pair, I, and this is obviously not the way to do it. Um, <laughs> Part of it was just I worked at Full Locker, so I got a discount. So if I could get it on discount, I was buying it. At right. the, that's it, period. And I was also very much like a completist, but like a very general completist where it was like, if it's a Jordan 3, I'm buying it. If it's a Jordan 13, I used to love Jordan 13s and they didn't come out that often, I'm buying it. Um, if I see an SB anywhere at an outlet at a store, I'm buying it. Um, so for me, it was honestly, there was no decision making. As Phil mentioned earlier, it was literally like, I'll make I'll make the other things work after I buy this pair of shoes. It was like right. everything, lunch and dinner for the rest of the week fit into after me buying this pair of sneakers. So that's if you're just starting out with sneakers, that's not the way to do it. That's to say that <laughs> firstly. But yeah, so my decision making back then was non-existent. It was buy the shoe if you like the shoe, even if you kind of like the shoe. If you're gonna wear it, it doesn't matter. Um, just buy the shoe if you don't have it yet. <laughs> was my decision mm-hmm. yep. making back then. Um, Alvin, what used to go into your decision making when you were buying a shoe way back when? Nothing. Oh, it's fifty day. Yeah, it's fifty. Which shoes day. Are on 50? Yeah. Done. Ten pairs of shoes later. Fuck. Which ones you have on hold in yeah, the back exactly. on fifty? Yeah, exactly. Ooh, and then you decide which ones section. you want. <laughs> oh my gosh, where are my size elevens, bro? Yeah. And then like I don't know, pretty much any launch because. Because it's like, oh, yeah, cool. I can buy it. I can buy it on discount. Done. Mm. And it just made it easier. So it's just like, yeah, that was it. Just I had no decision making. I had no sort of hierarchy. I, it was just like, yo, discount. Done. I don't have to worry about nothing. Nope. Un- <laughs> until the bill comes in. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, there it is. But yeah, no, absolutely no nothing. It was yeah. just like, cool. Glad Give me we're, that. Glad that we're on it. the same page. Uh, yeah. Joel, I think you are slightly more mature when you started really getting heavily into sneakers. <laughs> so I'm wondering, did you have like a decision making process when you were buying sneakers like 10, 15 years ago? Like, what was it like? Just like you guys, man. Discount, man. Like, you know, I didn't work at the stores, but yo, you guys worked at the stores. And you guys hooked <laughs> me up, you know? So, yo, friends and family, yeah, 
Fam cop. Let's yeah. go. Fam cop. One price. for Mayor, one for yeah. Domar. Let's go. I remember Run those it. cops, bro. Yeah. So man, like it was all about the discounts back then. And like like you guys said, like it just it was just reckless. It was just reckless back then. Whew. That was a this honestly makes me anxious even thinking about those times of how much yeah. I spent on sneakers. But for um real, man. Phil, what about you? I it was it's kinda interesting because you kind of left sneakers for a while and came back. Is it mm-hmm. still the same thing where it was like carte blanche where you were like give me everything or like what like how was it um yeah i mean we all got the discounts so it was like <laughs> there was no decision and i I was kind of just buying basketball shoes really mm-hmm. and, and at one point you know when i think about it i bought kobe one two three four five six seven at this point it's different because i don't need a basketball shoe every year i don't need a you know i don't need a kobe every year like the Kyrie hasn't to me it hasn't been different since the the three i think yeah yeah so I don't yeah, really yeah. I don't need that. And um I don't think I'm getting hundred and twenty five dollars shoes anymore. Like yeah. shoes are just expensive. Like is it just me? The shoes I want, yeah. I have to pay resale for. So I'm yeah. gonna be more choosy with what goes on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm buying the same shoe over and over again, right? I'm getting Jordan One lows like all the time, but I'm wearing them all. And I guess that's the difference because once I you know, I bought f- how many pairs of those LeBron tens? I bought like seven pairs oh of LeBron tens. Yeah. And I would, you know, I would wear one. And when I got the next one, I wouldn't wear the other one anymore. So I don't think I'm buying shoes like that at, at this point. I'm just like being really selective yeah. with what I want to keep on the shelf. And I'll have multiple silhouettes or, or multiple um, pairs of the same silhouette if I wear it. Yeah. If not, I, I, I'm okay to pass. Yeah. There was no passing back in the day for me. No. <laughs> no. It was either buy it or put it on hold. Those were my two options. Passing was put it on hold for later. That was literally yeah. it. Um, yeah. yeah, 100%. I'm glad we're all on the same page. I would feel better about myself now. But um, yeah, I mean, even just to start it, do you guys buy stuff just based on price now? I feel like that's dangerous. Like if you, I don't buy things anymore just because they're cheap. Like even like if I walk into an outlet, I I realized the other day that I want a pair of blazers. Like I think I want to make them just like an everyday shoe, like a pair, like a regular ass pair of Nike blazers. And I walked into a Nike outlet, and there was a women's pair in a size ten and a half. It was white with like a lime green, and it was ninety nine plus thirty percent off, seventy bucks. And I was like, like, I don't love them. I don't want a lime green shoe as an everyday shoe, but like it's seventy bucks. And I was like, no, don't buy it just because it's seventy dollars. Like that's not a reason. A re- price is not a, for me. Price is not a reason anymore. Like a low price is not a reason to buy a shoe anymore. But I'm wondering, like, does that factor in for you guys? Like, does the lower price make it more attractive, or is it just like if I don't like it, I don't like it? I mean, getting a discount, getting a discount. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> if if, if it's if a shoe you were already gonna buy. Then yeah, so I mean, it's uh, getting a discount is getting a discount, but it's it's getting a discount on a shoe that I would have been willing to pay maybe sale price for. Like maybe. if it was on my radar, and I was just like, so for example, the uh, the the Orbit Gray Forum Highs. Yeah, I lo- the, like when I saw those, I was like, yo, these are dope. If they go on sale, just because like yo, let's face it, money's not where it everyone yeah. needs it to be but i'm like yo if this goes on sale perfect i'm gonna cop but then they started selling out i'm like fuck <laughs> and then when i that's why when i got the discount code or when the when when chris was like yo i got a thing and i'm like okay i'm down that was it but like again like i won't like obviously that i'm tempted like when livestock has their sales or or like oth has their sales i'll always look i'll put stuff in the cart but then you're just you now we think about it as opposed to us yeah. before where it was like, okay, cool. It's on discount. I'm just going to cop it and worry about yeah. what I'm going to yeah. do with it later. Exactly. Now you like, we, we stop and think, and it's just like, yo, am I really going to rock these? And if it's a no, then I'm just like, okay, I'll, I'll exit the window. So my cart just empties. <laughs> and that's it. But, um, yeah. Joel, what about you? Are you buying, like, do you ever find yourself buying just because of price or you just try, do you kind of try to avoid doing that now? No, like you, like, I don't know how many episodes now, but I haven't picked up any shoes at all. Like there's no, no pickups at all for me. So it, it's selective now. And like, you no, know, despite of like being on discount, am I really going to wear it? Probably not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like, if I really want something, I'll probably go and get it. But it's yeah. right now, it's very selective right now. And you know, you get older and it's like shit that you gotta, you got other priorities, you know? So, but yeah, very, very selective nowadays, man. 
Do you guys do the thing where you compare what that could buy you in real life? Like when you're about to buy a pair of shoes for yeah. two bills and you're like, <laughs> and it's like, Dude, well, this, this Jordan now retails at 265. That's, do I want to do, get that or pay my car insurance this month? Like that's, that's what it's equal. Do you guys, <laughs> do you guys do that or is that just me or do you just try not to think about it? I do it the opposite way, man. I'm, I'm like, you know how many shoes I could buy for that? <laughs> So like, yo, I could have bought three pairs of the Sean's with the mortgage I pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of any of the Sean W's. <laughs> Sean Bill, w. do you find yourself uh, buying things just because of price or are you trying to avoid that because uh, space is a little bit tighter? Uh, I, you know what? No, I, uh, I thought I was doing that. And then I could, exact same thing. I saw a pair of blazers at the Nike Dixie like a, maybe a year, year and a half ago. And I'm like, you know what? It comes to forty dollars. Why don't I just get this nice pink blazer? It's cool. And I never wore it. Like, if I don't want to, like, why would? And I just I ended up giving it away, like, before we moved. Yeah. Like unworn. I'm like, this is. There's no point in, in spending a little bit for something you're never gonna wear. Yes. I think. Yeah. I think I'm yeah. more on the page of like, I'll pay twice what something costs uh, if I'm gonna use it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They used to have like this saying like a long time ago of like women buy buy something they don't need because it's on sale but a guy will pay twice what it costs for something he does need yes mm. it's it's kind of sexist but that was like an old <laughs> saying so i'm just repeating it <laughs> it's it not, it's not his saying. specific saying he's <laughs> yeah. not putting not, i didn't make that up at okay. the end of it no trademark there <laughs> put that on his tombstone uh, yeah <laughs> Um, I think that that goes back to like when I'm buying a pair of sneakers, I try to think of like, what will I reach for ahead of this? And if it's a really long list of sneakers, then I'm not going to buy it. Like those blazers, like realistically, I want it to be an everyday shoe. So it's kind of different. But if I'm at a Nike outlet and I see like a really solid pair and I'm like, okay, this is cool. But where does it fit into the rotation? Like, am I ever going to choose this before this air max or this pair and then i'm like if it's yeah. so low on the list like phil said he bought the really cool pink blazers that i'm sure were dope but it was just so low on the list of like i have so many other cooler pairs or pairs i would rather wear that right. like i don't care like do you guys do the thing where you compare to what you already have because like, i think that we all kind of described before it was just buy everything doesn't matter what i already own do you kind of compare what you already own now to what you're thinking about buying alvin yeah, like I really liked those Georgetown threes. Oh, I love those. I was like, yo, navy blue with that gray cement elephant print. And I was just like, that that would look dope when I wear my Yankee fitted. But mm. then I was like, yo, real talk. I, I still only reach for my black cement threes. Yeah. And that still goes dope with a Yankee fitted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I can't justify it. Plus, it was like 265 or... Yeah, it's two sixty five. Yeah, Jordans are stupid expensive, man. They yeah. went up another ten bucks. Yeah, man, crazy. So it's like I, I it, was, it wasn't an easy pass, but I mean, it was a justified pass for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Joel, are you doing that as well? Where you're like at the store? I mean, maybe, I don't know if anyone really buys things at the stores anymore. When you're just shopping <laughs> for a new <laughs> pair, are you like considering what you already own, or does it not matter? Oh well, yeah, like it's like it crosses my mind all the time, and it's. And just like with the prices of shoes nowadays, it's like, do I really want to drop this much money on this pair of shoes that I'm probably just going to leave in the box? Like, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, man, like I said before, it's like I just cop like whatever I'm going to wear. Rails only. Yeah, for real. So, but yeah, man, prices for sure, like, make me stray away from like, you know, sneakers, like purchasing and whatnot yeah it's, it's honestly a good thing that prices went up so much because i would own a lot more sneakers if the prices were a little bit lower <laughs> like if georgetown threes were 150 like i used to pay for yeah. threes then i would own them right now but um mm-hmm. so phil i kind of know the answer because you said you i can see behind you you have mostly jordan one lows and jordan one highs <laughs> behind <laughs> you so like is it kind of just for you like color like uh, you you mentioned you want to get particle gray neutral gray you already have neutral gray highs so does it come down to color does it come down to just like i want them all like what does it come down to when you're kind of deciding like okay i'm getting another jordan one low i just need them all or is there like some sort of thought process that goes into it um it's a little bit like if i like the color or but but mostly it's like what 
spot, what void is this shoe going to fill? Not philosophically, obviously, but (laughs) what void is this going to fill in like what you guys are saying and your outfits or when you're going to wear it? Like, am I going to choose this over something else? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'll wear all of those three shoes that I named earlier of the Jordan one lows. So I think I'm I'm cool to get them all. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and it helps when you, when you have shoes like out like this without boxes, uh, it makes your decision making a lot easier. I'll say that. Um, just True. knowing that when I buy something, it's going to knock something out of here as opposed to just throwing a box on top of another box and then forgetting about it. Yeah. Um, I just mm-hmm. won't spend as much. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm going to have to knock something off this wall if I if I buy another shoe. And what what's it going to be? What am I going to take off this wall? And is it worth the whatever pink yeah. blazer I'm going to get. Like I would <laughs> yeah, put yeah, that yeah. pink blazer over anything I have on the wall. So I think, I think it helps. And and it helps with your shoes, like wearing them. If you can see them all, you're never going to forget what yeah. you have. And yeah. then uh, you're just, your, your rotation will be like a lot nicer. You'll, you'll start wearing them. Do you mm-hmm. buy less to col- just to collect now? Like we all keep talking about, I'm sure that all of us still have that little bit of a collector aspect. Like you mentioned Cool Ray 11s. I mentioned South Beach 8s. I'm not sure I would ever wear a LeBron 8 nowadays, but I'm going to buy them because I want to have them in the collection. Do you buy now, especially because you have everything out and in front of your face, do you buy less just to collect, like just to have, or is it all like function for you now? Uh, I think I, I don't. Yeah, I'm not really... I don't collect to tell you the truth. Like I have maybe the, the neutral gray that's around here somewhere that I haven't unboxed yet. Or, um, and maybe my CDG air air force high or mid, those are the only two shoes that are, are DS. Like everything else has been worn and like worn a lot. So I don't, I don't really, really wouldn't say I'm a collector and it's not like, a lot of people collect and they keep them dead stock or they keep the box. Like I can't sell anything. I don't have any boxes, man. No one's <laughs> buying shit from me. <laughs> like who's going to just take a loose pair of shoes. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a collector. Like I have what I have. And if it gets knocked off the shelf, I'm cool with donating it. I'm cool with selling it. I'm cool with like trading it away for something else. So I don't know. They're kind of like, I don't know, trading cards or stocks. I guess trading if you cards. collect trading, <laughs> like collect cards, Pokemon cards, but those people that collect Pokemon cards, yeah, they're collectors. But do you play Pokemon? <laughs> if you play it with those cards, then I don't think you're a collector. No, and it, I wear them, so I, I wouldn't consider myself a collector. You know, I I mean, a lot of people would consider you a collector with the 200 pairs of shoes behind you. But I I do I know what you mean. Um, Alvin, are you because space is of of all four of us? I think space is the most limited for Alvin. I went to his house and he had shoes under the sink. So I mean, he's trying to shove them wherever he can. <laughs> are you buying less just to collect now? Does everything have to have a function if it's going to enter your closet? Most definitely. Um, as much as I want to grab stuff just to have in the collection, just to say I have it, um, that's not realistic anymore. And I'll be honest, I'm going to purge real soon. Ooh. And it'll be a serious purge. Like anything that I haven't worn in the past year will be on the list. Um, and it's just, I just need the space. I want to condense and like, I want to be able to wear everything that I have. So similar to Phil, like he literally has hundreds, no, not hundreds, but he has a good chunk of shoes behind him. A and hundred. Most of them, like all, he said two are DS. Yeah, and I want to. Yeah. I want to be the same. You know what I mean? Like, I just want. I want everything to be worn. I don't want anything to go to waste and and just stay in a box. Like, yeah. So definitely no. no <laughs> I'm, I mean, I still want to have sneakers, but it, it's not going to be for collecting. It's it's always going to be for wearing now. Yeah, I mess with that. I mess with that, and I agree, I'm getting there more so. Like, I still the completest is still in me where I'm like I still want to have South Beaches, and if it comes down to it, I would wear. It's not a shoe I wouldn't wear, but like there are there are pairs that I'm like, yeah, I need to have it, um, even if I don't intend on necessarily wearing it. Um, I feel like the only other person who may slightly agree with me is Joel. Joel, are you are you into still like the buying? Like you know, the nostalgia kicks in. Maybe you're not going to necessarily wear it, but uh, you're still interested in just having it because you've wanted it for for so 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 long um that only comes to play with like the older style sneakers that's fair um like the the uncomfortable 
shoe that you can't wear for like eight hours kind of thing, <laughs> like those kind of shoes. But um, yeah, I haven't really like, like I don't buy man. Like I haven't bought anything and it's, I guess, I don't know. Like it just, it's just not, not in me anymore. Like you get, you don't, you don't really get out of it. Like there's, there's still that, that, that fire for me to like, you know, the itch. yeah, the itch to like, you know, still check out like what's out there, but it's just like pulling the trigger nowadays. It's, it's slim to none. Like, you know, I just can't, I can't do it anymore because it all kicks in. Like, okay, I gotta, you know, that's like a, like, like a meal. Like that's like yeah. a perfect meal like the, for the whole family <laughs> kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? So that, that's that, that like priorities that, that always comes to play for me. When yeah. It's just... always like, you know, pulling that trigger. I just push that shoes. push that to the back of my mind. That's um we can worry about that later. <laughs> um <laughs> man, Phil, this was dope, man. This was really fun. I like I said it was a long time coming, so I apologize for the wait, but it was definitely worth the wait. Uh thanks for for coming out and hanging out with us, bro. Of course, this was tons of fun. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh so thank you to Phil and thank you to everyone listening wherever you're taking in the episode. Please leave a comment, review, follow and or subscribe. Make sure to check out canadagotsold.ca to shop the latest CGS merch, peep the YouTube for our latest videos and check out CGS Talk on Facebook to top it up with us. Of course, do not forget to use hashtag #canadagotsold on Instagram for a feature. I have been Lawrence Hopkins and you can find me at L Doggy Styles on Instagram. Woof. I'm Joel Hernandez. You can find me at Joe Dooney, J-O underscore D three O's N-E-Y. My name's Alvin Quincy, and you can find me at M-I-S-T-E-R-Q and then Mars. And Philip, where can they find you? Don't forget to plug the Twitch as well. Oh, yeah. I'm on IG, Sniper underscore Phil, and Twitch, The Sniper Phil. The Sniper Phil. Thank you for listening to us talk about sneakers for, what is it, 164 episodes. And please remember to rock your kicks. This has been True to Size. We have been CGS and the Sniper Phil. And we are out. Peace. 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 No. I could not believe it. I could not believe when I saw people start spelling it. I was like, wait a second. What are you spelling? No. Jeez.